all. This is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is short and sweet. And this is about the bivalent booster. It's a preprint study. Bivalent booster, really not much better than monovalent booster. Actually, in my opinion, after reading that, bivalent booster may be less beneficial compared to monovalent booster. However, if the bivalent is not any better than monovalent, then the reason we have the bivalent becomes invalid. The reason for the bivalent was that monovalent isn't working as good against Omicron, so let's add Omicron-based vaccine mRNA as well. But if it didn't do any better, then it has become useless, at least for that purpose. So with this, let's look at the study. So here is the drbean.com's sites. There is a link in the description for a very low price, one time non-recurring, you get access to another 900 medical lectures, not discussions of this sort, but medical lectures. Um, this is a study, it is a preprint, antibody responses to Omicron BA45 bivalent mRNA vaccine booster shot. This is another study that I had discussed in the past, a bivalent Omicron containing booster vaccine against COVID-19. This is October 6. Then here is some CDC data as well. If you like, these are the uh, links in the description. There is what is ID50. ID50 titer is different from ID50 for infection, but I have put this over here. Then this is, so I have cre uh, posted a counter argument paper as well, so that you have a balanced view. You can read them both. Here, SARS-CoV-2 vaccination washes away original antigenic sin. So he, this paper is saying that if somebody had the infection first and that created the original antigenic sin or immune imprinting, that the vaccine somehow washes that away. That just sounds so fantastical, but here is the paper. And then original antigenic sin and what, that, what does that mean? That is here as well. With this back here, let's start our discussion. So these are gifts for humanity. They are continuing. Thank you very much for your time to watch them. Here is the summary. So many people say, could you summarize it? So here is the summary. This first paragraph is the summary. The summary is, bivalent booster did not induce superior neutralization response compared to original monovalent vaccine formulation at the time period tested in humans. That's it. That's the summary. What does this mean? A little elaboration of the summary is this. The reason bivalent came into existence was that the previous vaccine mRNA against the wild type wasn't working as well to, for Omicron. There were more breakthrough infections. So they said, why not we target by Omicron as well? And so in this vaccine, the bivalent vaccine, there is messenger RNA, half of it against wild type, plus half of it, let's say 25 microgram, against Omicron. And the thought was this will neutralize Omicron better. That was the purpose of the bivalent booster. The result is it doesn't do that. So you can say it is as good as monovalent. And then you can claim that, hey, whatever monovalent is doing, it is doing it as well. So it has not failed. I agree. But it has failed in its purpose. So with this, this is it. The summary is done. We are good. Now I'm going to share some data from this preprint. So there are three main concepts that they handled. This is an in vitro study. They took these samples, serum samples, from people who were boosted, either with three vaccine doses or four vaccine doses, including the fourth one being the bivalent booster, or breakthrough infections, and they tested those for neutralization. So here is what they found. Oh, let me back up once more. They did three main types of tests. One test was that is the booster, bivalent booster, making any more antibodies compared to non-bivalent boosters? That was one test. So 
tighters the levels. Second test they did was breadth of the coverage. That how broadly this booster covers, does it cover Omicron and the wild type and the other similar variants? The point was, can the future variants may be covered as well? So that was a second test. The third test was compare the bivalent booster to the monovalent booster or breakthrough infection and see if their neutralizing capability is better, the bivalent capability is better than others. These were the three tests. So let's see. First test, at three to five weeks post booster shot, Individuals who received a fourth vaccine dose with a bivalent mRNA vaccine targeting BA4 and 5 had similar neutralizing antibody titers as those receiving a fourth monovalent mRNA vaccine. So I saw someone and I, I mentioned it before as well. Somebody forwarded this to some other person and said, well, you see that there are no extra va vaccine uh, antibody titers. There were no expected extra titers. The monovalent booster had 50 microgram of messenger RNA. The bivalent booster had 25 microgram of the wild type and 25 microgram for Omicron. So they are also 50. So when you give 50 microgram of messenger RNA or the antigen, body is not going to make anything more. It is actually for the body. It is the same quantity of antigen exposure. So this complaint is wrong to say bivalent should do better in terms of titers. So I think we don't really care for this. It is fine. They found it good. They observed it. We now know it. Thank you very much to the researchers. Then, and by the way, this is from the New York University and Michigan University. So good universities, good researchers. So those who received a fourth monovalent vaccine dose had a slightly higher neutralizing antibody titers. So check this out. Those who received a fourth monovalent, not bivalent, monovalent vaccine dose had a slightly higher neutralizing antibody titers than those who received the bivalent vaccine For SARS-CoV-1, DD pangolin, and W1V1. These are sort of related variants. What does this mean? This means that the bivalent booster failed to create breadth of antibodies. Breadth of antibodies is usually expected from the vaccine that they would create antibodies that will have more broader impact and would cover more variants as well. Here, the monovalent actually did better than the bivalent. So this becomes, although, what is the interpretation for the, of this one? The interpretation is that future variant may not be covered as well from the bivalent. However, I would say nobody's seen the future, so maybe even monovalent will not work. So we don't know where the mutation is going to go. So again, good information seems like bivalent isn't broad enough, but still not very practical for us. The third one, the neutralization capability. This is the most important one because this will then play towards efficacy. And here is what it says. When given as a fourth dose, a bivalent mRNA vaccine targeting Omicron BA4 and 5. Remember, bivalent was for Omicron's BA4 and 5. Targeting Omicron BA4 and 5 and an ancestral SARS-CoV-2 strain did not induce superior neutralizing antibody responses in humans at the time period tested compared to the original monovalent vaccine formulation. This is what is bad. So bivalent. <laughs> so I, I just looked at Alexander's comment. Alexander, you're funny. Okay. So the bivalent vaccine did not induce a superior set of neutralizing antibodies for Omicron. 
it was made for omicron it did not do that for omicron that is a problem in simple words if if this much is clear then we can actually stop now the question they said why and there is a hypothesis they don't know really why here is the hypothesis they said it may be immune imprinting or original antigenic sin and how does that work So imagine this is the Wuhan variant spike protein. And in this spike protein, these red antigens, imagine these are the dominant antigens on the receptor binding domain and receptor binding motif. And that is where these antigens are. And these are the ones that our body is going to target and make antibodies for. Good. So these are good targets. You target them, the spike is disrupted. However, in the future variants, so imagine this guy here is the spike protein from the Omicron. By the way, do you like these little chicken looking spike proteins? So imagine this is Omicron spike protein. And imagine those targeted, good, dominant, bad antigens that we were targeting during the Wuhan time, they have moved away. And now they are not dominant anymore. Actually, this little recessive one here has become dominant here, meaning there is mutation in the spike protein and a new set of antigens have become more prominent in the receptor binding domain and receptor binding motif. The mutations are everywhere, but these are the relevant, important mutations. So now the recessive has become dominant and dominant has become recessive. Let's use that as an example. Why do we want to do that? Because if you see here, if you go to the cells, so let's say this is a B cell. This B cell is making antibodies. It's very upset. It looked at the antigen. That antigen is Wuhan antibody, which we introduced either with the infection or with the previous vaccines. So remember, the problem here with the imprinting is occurring because of the previous vaccine of the Wuhan type. So we introduce this antigen to our immune system, and this antigen has these little red anti antigens that are dominant. So of course, our immune cell, B cell said, all right, I'm going to make antibodies against these dominant antigens. Then the person was given a booster with the Omicron antigen or spike protein, which has a very different spike protein conformation or structure. So it is kind of an escaped one. It has mutated. So now those blue ones, let's say, are more dominant compared to the red ones. But when our B cell looks at this thing, it says, you know what? I'm going to start making those antibodies that I know to make. And so when it makes them, it's trying to target an, an antigen that has become less important on this spike protein. And so now the spike protein is all happy because it has changed its receptor binding domain and receptor binding motif, and it can still work with ACE2 while our immune system is trying to attack its areas that doesn't even matter anymore. And all of a sudden, an escape has occurred. The thought was, the purpose of the bivalent was, bivalent would cause our B cells to produce antibodies that would attack these new blue areas or the antigen binding areas or, for example, the receptor binding motif and receptor binding domain. And it would happen. This is not true that this will never happen. When you introduce this into a person, the immune system is going to try to attack it with the with whatever previous knowledge it has. If it fails in that, it is going to make new antigens as antibodies as well. But that would take time. So immediately, it would actually fail or be less effective, be less neutralizing, because now the antibodies are going here. This is the imprinting. So they actually saw this with this booster, that neutralizing capability wasn't any better than the neutralizing capability of the monovalent. And breadth was less, which is very interesting. Meaning future coverage, possibility of coverage 
is limited with bivalent compared to monovalent. So then some details. What did they do really? They had 14 people who had three doses of messenger RNA vaccine. They had 21 people who had a bivalent booster dose. Then they had 19 people who had three or four original variant, including the fourth as a booster. And they had 20 people who were who had breakthrough infections. So they took all of their sera and they compared their behavior for three things, as I said before, titers, breadth of neutralization, and neutralization against Omicron. They also found something, and I have already spoken the results, so I don't need to go over them again. They also found something interesting. That was that the ID50 of the boosted individuals, regardless of how they were boosted, with the monovalent or bivalent, ID50 of the boosted was lower compared to ID50 of the infected, breakthrough infected. Meaning, so let's look at ID50 very quickly. Imagine I have a booster or, a, or an infection, any one of them, assign in your head something about me. Then you take my serum. And now you take that serum and you take a piece of that serum, a part of that serum, and you put the pseudo virus in there and you see what kind of neutralization happens. So that is, let's say, this box. Then you take another part of the serum and dilute it to half. And then you try to put the virus, pseudo virus in it and see if it neutralizes. Or ID50 is like half neutralization. If it does, then you dilute it further and try it. And then you dilute it further. So, of course, if the potency of neutralization, the power of neutralization is more, then you can keep diluting it for a long time and it would stay powerful. It would stay neutralizing. But if the neutralizing cap capability is less, then you dilute it a few times and it would become so dilute that the taste is gone. It doesn't neutralize anymore. So boosted individuals, regardless of what booster they had, bivalent or mono, monovalent, they had lower ID50 and infected individuals had higher ID50. That means effect, breakthrough individuals had neutralizing capability and breadth that was much more powerful compared to boosted. That was interesting. So here, if you read geometric mean ID50 titers, this is not ID50 infection, ID50 titers for healthcare folks, against SARS-CoV-2 variants were lowest for boosted sera and highest for BA4-5 breakthrough infected sera. Very interesting. There was no significant difference in neutralization of any SARS-CoV-2 variant tested between individuals who received a fourth monovalent vaccine and those who received a fourth dose of bivalent vaccine. No difference. ID50 titers against three related viruses were slightly but significantly higher in those who received a fourth monovalent. What does that mean? The breadth of coverage was better with the monovalent. And I can understand it. Do you know why? Look, here you've given that little chicken-like spike protein, correct? You train your immune system to attack it once. So let's say first dose. Then you train it again to attack it again. It's the same vaccine, same antigen. Then you train it again. Then you train it again. Fourth booster. Imagine how much this thing is trained, the B cell, how much affinity maturation has occurred. So it would work better. And because with each exposure, it would make more and antibodies against other parts. And so the more exposures you are giving it, the more kind of antibody various B cells would produce against various parts of this. So our body would learn to have a greater coverage. But in the fourth one, you come up with a different thing and the body's breadth of work has reduced because you introduced a new thing. So back here, breadth was less. That 
makes me sad. But anyways, that's what that is. Then they say, at the end, they say, boosting with a new bivalent mRNA vaccine, targeting both BA4 and 5, and an ancestral SARS-CoV-2 strain did not elicit a discernibly superior virus neutralizing antibody responses compared boosting compared to boosting with an original monovalent vaccine. These findings may be indicative of immunological imprinting, although follow-up studies are needed to determine if the antibody responses will deviate in time, including the impact of second bivalent. Can you see? This? It, it, I love these studies that they always end up with saying, okay, give more boosters, give more vaccine. So they say, well, you know what? Test for more bivalent boosters. Give a second dose of booster, then see what happens. So anyways, this is where we are at. So this is the discussion. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Love having you here. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a nice weekend. In the description of this video, there are some links if you would like to support this work. My work actually runs with your support. So America runs on McDonald's and Dr. Bean runs with your support. So there is a link for coffees if you would like to buy me a coffee. Or there's a link for you can use PayPal or you can become a Substack member. You can become a patron, $5 per month, and you have access to patrons. You we directly talk, or you can have access to Dr. Bean for just six, seven dollars. You can become part of this YouTube channel as well. So this is the discussion. Uh, I hope that you all are well. And okay, excellent. So welcome everyone, and I would see you on Monday. <laughs> Chad Ariel says, Yeah, I did behave. I knew I could do it. Very good. Thank you. Good. A trophy for you. And Margaret says, Thank you. You're very welcome. Everyone, very welcome. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye for now. Please like, subscribe, and share. Bye.